Hello friends. Today we are presenting here a primary umbilical hernia, incarcerated irreversible umbilical hernia, ETEP RS repair. 38 year old male patient presented with pain in abdomen, umbilical swelling since last many years, progressively increased to attend the, this size. Swelling is irreducible since last six months. Patient has repeatedly pain in abdomen and uh, treated conservatively for two months, but no relief. So, CT scan abdomen revealed in this patient. The defect is around 4 cm diameter and uh, the content of hernia is uh, omentum and clinically the thin papery skin over the hernia fat with discoloration is noted. <coughs> Here these are the probable port sites, the surface marking before operation. This represents the symphysis pubis, the midline, linea alba, deep sternum, the costal margins on both the sides, this is the umbilical defect. Irreducible. Even under anesthesia, it is irreducible. Four centimeter below the inferior border of the umbilicus, it represents the arcuate line approximately, and the seven centimeter from the midline will represent approximately the seminal line. Marking done on both the sides. This line represents linea seminomare, approximately 7 cm. As on CT scan, his uh, rectus abdominis width is approximately 7.2 cm. So, this will be a first port. Then four centimeter, four fingers below that along this inner line will be second port and the third port. Again, four fingers below the second port. This is the optical entry. You can see here the white sign. Then the rectus muscle and the target is the superior sheet. Here we change the direction of the. Uh, the section with the optical trocar. Before that, we start the COT insufflation, and the direction of the uh, this section will be exactly perpendicular, uh, exactly horizontal to the patient, and the section will transfer further. And then the dissection is done with telescope in the retromuscular plane, the retrovectus plane above the posterior rectus sheet. In two and four movements of the telescope, so this is a telescopic dissection. This is 10 mm zero degree telescope. You can see here the neurovascular bundle and that is the end point for the lateral dissection. Now we change the telescope to the 10 mm 30 degree and then you can see here again a neurovascular bundle and the lateral border of the rectus muscle. So four fingers below this particular optical entry trocar we take a second trocar pyman trocar through this we inserted the ratio and started the section towards the 
pelvis while dissecting this plane we see to it that we are not crossing the neurovascular bundles or injuring the neurovascular bundles we are keeping the dissection above the posterior rectus sheath this is the arcuate line you can at least see it here the arcuate line and then the second trocar, 10 mm trocar again 4 fingers below the second trocar as we are taking a 30 degree telescope we are taking here a 10 mm trocar now telescope is shifted to this third trocar and this is a 5 mm instrument a 5 mm trocar we are inserting the hook and this is the posterior rectus sheet and we are incising the posterior rectus sheet on the same side now you will see here the yellow piercing part is a falciform ligament we are extending the incision cranial caudally so on the cranial side we are extending the incision and then with the help of a, a bowel forceps we are just swiping this particular falciform ligament down and you can see here the white glistening structure which is a linear alba and again the posterior rectus sheet is incised with the help of a hook uh, incision is extended further down towards the pelvis would you put the rest of the sheet you stick it and just start the top leg up is just push down see on the opposite side there we are taking incision on the posterior rectus sheet on the opposite side and you see here after taking incision you can see the muscle of the opposite side so that is the posterior rectus sheet of the opposite side and this is of midline crossover what we are doing here so you can see the opposite side the rectus muscle and then we are extending the incision cranial caudally and you can see here the small opening of the linea because of the first entry that can be featured afterwards by closing the linea I closed it you can see it later on and incision is extended further down and then the fourth profile coming from the opposite side opposite rest of muscle here is again we are taking a 10 mm trocar so that our telescope can be shifted to this particular port and now the first optical trocar is converted to hand instrument and optics is shifted to the port trocar and then we are dissecting in the midline now and you can see here the opposite side the field rectus sheet and we are dissecting above the posterior rectus sheet the fascia and above we are seeing the muscle we are put the rectus muscle on the right side of the patient and standing at the 
head end of the patient or you can see on the right shoulder of the patient left shoulder of the patient and the camera person is standing on the right shoulder of the patient and this is the camera line now with the help of the detector i am extending this posterior rectus space and detecting this further down Laterally, the extent of dissection is up to the neovascular bundles. The midline, I'm extending down. Here, care should be taken that you should not injure the mini alba. The white glistening structure that we have seen here is the mini alba, and This is the hernia site we are approaching. This is the hernia. This is typical of Vulcano site of Dr. Ramana. We are dissecting. Both these sides, the posterior rectus sheath, cutting down 0.5 millimeters below the linea alba, so that we are uh, we will prevent the injury to linea alba. Try to reduce the contents. Try to reduce the adhesions because of the prolonged nature of the hernia. But still, I couldn't able to reduce it. The pressure is given from the outside. At the same time, I try to reduce with the help of two bowel forceps down. Still, it was not coming, so I taken a hook and just extended a little bit, around 0.5 centimeters. Extension of the hernia defect is done with the help of a hook, and then try to reduce. At the same time, a pressure is given from the outside. The patient is asked to do a pressure, and the contents are reduced. After that, you can see here all the contents are gone down. There is no adhesion to the sac. This is a sac, hernia sac. There is a peritoneum, and there is no defect in the peritoneum per se. You can see here there is no defect in the peritoneum. So peritoneum is taken down carefully, and the incision is extended. Towards the pelvis. Now here, a care is taken not to open the posterior rectus sheath or the peritoneum. Try to dissect it. Dissect the sac only without causing injury to the peritoneum. You can see here, peritoneum is kept intact. Only adhesion part is cut with scissor. Here also you can see the defect edge in the peritoneum. In between that, we are cutting this without causing injury to the knee alba. Here. So in between. The posterior rectus sheath and linea alba. We are dissecting further towards the pelvis, the symphysis pelvis. The incision is extended down further. 
Uh, this is a primary umbilical hernia. So, the uh, question is whether to dissect it up to symphysis pubis or not. The thing is, you have to dissect at least 7 to 10 centimeters below the lower margin of the defect. So, we are dissecting further towards symphysis pubis. No necessity to reach up to symphysis pubis, but here in this case, I have dissected further till the time I see the symphysis pubis. Okay, you can see here I have put a, a needle from above at 7 cm and at 10 cm as well to show that the extent is the dissection is enough for this particular hernia defect without much of a diverification. So below the umbilicus there is no diverification as such. But our umbilicus, there is a little bit of a diverification. Here you can see the nizu. I have passed at 7 cm and another nizu. I have passed at 10 cm below the inferior border. And you can see here white glistening structure that is going by the series. And this is a midline defect as well as the linear alpha. Now this is the posterior to sweep. And the defect in the posterior rectus suite with peritoneum. There is some bleeding. I want to see the bleeding point and see whether the peritoneum is open somewhere. So I try to clear it off and see from all sides there is no defect aspect. There is no opening in the peritoneum or the hernia sac which we have reduced. The contents are already reduced. There are no adhesions of the hernia contents to this sac from inside it seems. Then I started suturing the linea alba with the help of a 10 non absorbable V lock. 37 mm needle and suture it started 1 cm below the defect and then while closing the defect I see to it that I am taking a part of a pseudo sac so that the hernia sac is, the space of hernia sac is obliterated. So taking a continuous suture. While taking the suture, I see to it that the medial margins of the rectus muscle up to that part, we are taking the sutures, but not including the muscle. After taking continuous features, then I'm approximating the defect with pulling out the thread like this so that there is a proper approximation of the defect that is confirmed. And then again, a second layer of Suturing is also done over this particular defect, and then the second layer of the suturing is done at the 
the details and then I started closing the media alpha towards the CP server or towards the bigger screen. This diagonal cushion is not much, it is up to 2.5 cm only. I measured by putting the images at the edges of that linear uh, alpha and measure it from outside. It is approximately 2.5 cm. The normal linear alpha is up to 2.2 cm, not much, but still I am closing it. With the same VLOC, the VLOC length here is 45 centimeters. And I'm closing the linear alpha in the point where I have made a little small opening of linear alpha. So I'm doing the midline crossover in the epigap sphere that part is also closed with this particular this particular feature I'm approaching towards the city sternum that is towards the surgeon I'm coming from caudal to cranial or towards surgeon this and so you can see here the defective close and then the picture is cut. Now here the posterior rectus sheet is quite flat so I try to close it with this particular sack taken into account so that there is no tension. The sack is also utilized to closer of this particular defect. And why I have closed this is I am putting a mesh which I am not going to fix it. So because of this particular defect, the mesh should not crumple down into this particular space and then causing a problem. So that's why I have closed this particular defect with the help of uh, this hernia sac so it is closed by using this peritoneal pole Here the feature material I am using is the 2 max 1 feature It is same as the previous feature 2 0 so The feature is closed completely Now we are measuring the dissection part so, so that we can decide the size of the mesh to be put in this particular dissected part. So the length is tenure cowdery, it is approximately 30 centimeters and horizontally it is almost 15 centimeters towards 25 to it is around 12 centimeters so we are putting here parietal macroporous mesh make this electronic 30 by 15 size mesh i am putting here and it is really straight to accommodate the all dissected space you can you see here Mesh is evenly spread, almost occupying whole space 
because if you are can be also it is occupied almost all disrupted part so this entire operation we have done with the four force as there is not not much bleeding so we are not putting a drain over here then this is closed and desuppression is done and here you can see i can appreciate when i'm putting a finger inside the mesh is coming towards the optical tokas side these are four tokas we have used only four tokas Thanks for coming this long. Thank you. Thank you very much.